Today I'm going to show you how to blur backgrounds in Photoshop, but we're not just going to stop there, I'm also going to show you how to gradually blur backgrounds using a depth map to make it really realistic and not just to blur like in this example. So if you're ready to learn some cool tricks, then grab your snacks, get comfortable, and let's get cracking. What's up guys, my name is Francois, thank you so much for joining me on this beautiful day. If you're new here, on this channel I make regular tutorials showing you cool editing tips and tricks on Premiere Pro, After Effects or Photoshop just like today. So if you want to sharpen your editing skills then definitely consider subscribing so you don't miss any future videos. Also if you do learn something cool today please make sure to saturate the like button from black and white to blue as it really helps with the algorithm and it tells YouTube to recommend my videos to more and more people. It's really easy and you don't even need to open Photoshop to do it. So with that said, let's learn how to blur backgrounds in Photoshop using depth maps. The concept of this technique is rather advanced, but the way to get there is actually quite straightforward. And if you want to follow along with the exact same project file and picture as me, you can check out the links in the description to download them. The first thing we're going to do is determine what is the main point of focus in our picture. This will help us separate the background from the foreground and tell Photoshop what will be in focus and what will be out of focus. In our example here, it's very simple because the model Harley is our foreground and everything behind her in the picture is the background. However, not everything that is behind our model is at the same distance from the camera. Some of it is still very close, like the floor right behind her boots, and some of it is very far, like the end of the wall here. So in the second step, we'll find a way to tell Photoshop a relative distance between each layer of distance, so to speak. This data we will create is what we call a depth map. A depth map is simply a black and white image that represents how far objects are from the camera. The white areas of a depth map represents the objects or people that are close to the camera. The black areas represent what is the furthest away from the camera. And the levels of grays represent what is in between. The great thing with Photoshop is that you can use the information of a depth map to determine what is in focus and what is out of focus. So in the third step, I will show you how to use the depth map we're creating to apply a realistic gradual blur to our images. So let's start with the first step, separating background and foreground. Open your picture in Photoshop. Unlock the layer and duplicate it with Ctrl or Command J. There are a few ways to select our model here. What I'm going to do is use a technique that will work for the most amount of Photoshop users. Press L on your keyboard to bring up the lasso tool. Now we're not actually going to use the regular lasso tool, but rather the magnetic lasso tool. To find it, press Shift L on your keyboard to cycle through the three different types of lassos, or you can click and hold on the lasso tool and select the magnetic lasso tool here. The reason why I'm using the magnetic lasso tool as opposed to, let's say, the quick selection tool is that the background is very busy and can be confused by the AI for the subject. So at least with this technique, we can keep more control over the selection we make. Now let's zoom in on the picture a little bit, click on the point you'd like to start the selection from, release the mouse button and simply hover around the edges of the model. Once you get to the top of the canvas, hold the space bar on the keyboard and click and drag to readjust the view. This lasso tool is really good, but bear in mind that it's never going to be perfect in a picture like this. So let's go all around the picture just like this. This is going to be a little bit time consuming depending on the picture you're using, so I'm just going to fast forward this process. Don't have to worry about the hair selection just yet, because we'll tweak the first pass of the selection in just a second. Once you're happy with the first pass of your selection, just double click on your mouse and you should start to see what we call marching ants, which means that your selection is secured. Okay, so the first pass of a selection is done. Obviously, like I said, with a busy background like this one, it's never going to be perfect the first time, but it's okay because we can still add to this selection or even take away from this selection. In order to add to the selection, hold the shift key. You should see a little plus showing up next to your cursor. And now just select the parts that you want to add. And in order to remove parts from your selection, hold down the Alt key on your keyboard. You should now see a minus sign next to your cursor. And just like before, click and select the parts that you don't want. For the second pass, I normally use the regular lasso tool so that I can be as precise as I want without relying on the AI. So let's cycle through the lasso tools again with Shift and L on your keyboard and refine the selection. So I do know that there are plenty of other techniques if you want to select anything in Photoshop. So please let me know in the comments which one's your favorite and if you're going to use this one as well. So now that the main selection is done, let's sort all the small details and in particular the hair. With the selection still active and the lasso tool still selected, let's go to the top and click on Select and Mask. This will open a new menu. Press R on your keyboard to bring up the Refine Edge tool and paint over the edges of the hair to refine the selection and make it less harsh. Let's zoom in.
Once you're happy with the overall selection and the refinements around the hair, go down to the output modes, make sure it's on layer mask and click OK. This has now applied the selection to the picture in a non-destructive way. I've got a full tutorial on layer masks coming soon, so if you want to know everything there is to know on the subject, make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss it when it comes out. Okay, so this is the main subject selected. Uh, what do I do with it now? Well, for now we're going to keep the selection information separate and we won't touch it for a while. Let's duplicate the original layer with Ctrl Command J and delete the layer mask of the new layer. Also, do make sure to keep your layers organized and named throughout. Otherwise, it can get really messy. Now let's analyze the picture a little bit more. We can see that there's our model Harley here, which is where we want the focus to be on. Then we have the background, which will gradually disappear into the blur. However, there is also a little pole on it, somewhere in between the foreground and the background. So you guessed it, we're also going to select it. This time, since the pole is really quite straight, I'm going to use the polygonal lasso tool to isolate it. Just cycle through the lasso tools with Shift and L again on your keyboard until you get this icon. Click on the start of the selection and select segments around the parts we need to keep. So once you're happy with the selection and you still have this little guy following you uh, everywhere with your cursor, just double click and it should validate your selection. This should be a lot quicker than the previous selection, so once you're done, no need to use the Refine Edge tool, let's just click on this icon to apply the selection mask to the new image. Now it's time to isolate the floor. If you're still confused as to why we're isolating everything at the moment, fear not, as will all make sense to you in a bit. Also, if you think you find it easier to follow along with the exact same project file, remember that you can download it as well as the picture by clicking the link in the description below. Duplicate the original layer again with Ctrl Command J. Now, since the floor has pretty straight lines as well, I'm going to again use the polygonal lasso tool. Start clicking all around the floor just like this. At the moment, the selection has included Harley's legs and the pole, but we don't want that. So with Ctrl and Command Alt press on your keyboard, let's click on the layer mask for the two layers. This will remove the leg selection and the pole selection from the floor selection. Nice little trick there. Just like we did the two selection, let's click on this icon to add the layer mask to the floor layer. And finally, let's now isolate the wall behind. Duplicate the original layer again with Ctrl and Command J, and with the polygonal lasso tool, let's select the wall areas. Just like in the previous step, let's hold down Ctrl Command Alt on the keyboard and click on the layer mask for Harley and the pole. This will remove them from a selection. Now we can apply the layer mask to the wall layer again. Bosh. And now we've got a separate selection for every single object and surfaces from the picture. Congratulations, you made it this far! Just to keep you going, here's a picture of a really cute squirrel. You deserve it. And now you might be thinking, uh, But Francois, what do we do with all, all these uh, layer masks? I've never used this many layer masks in my life. Well, that's a good question. And I think you really like where this is going. We're going to determine what needs to be the most in focus, what needs to be the most out of focus, and what is in between. For this step, we're mostly going to work on layer masks. We will paint the parts that need to be in focus in white, paint the parts that need to be out of focus in black, and then with the gradient tool, we transition from one distance to another. But before anything, I'd recommend you to put all these layers in a group, just like so, and duplicate that group. This way, if you mess up really badly, you've always got a safe point and you don't have to start your quest from the beginning of your dungeon. Sorry, I played too much Zelda in my life. <laughs> but you don't have to worry too much about messing anything up because all these layers will be included in the download file linked below. So for those of you who aren't familiar with layer mask just yet, let's start with the easy one and it should hopefully make sense. Harley is the point of focus, so we can leave her layer mask entirely white. Now the pole is somewhere in between, so we're going to paint its layer mask grey. Since it's closer to Harley than it is to the back, let's choose a fairly bright grey. Let's try this one. Now you don't want to paint outside of the selection we just made, so let's bring the selection back up. Hold down Ctrl Command on your keyboard and click on the layer mask. Now it won't matter if you paint outside of the edge, it just won't do anything. Still with the layer mask selected, let's use a grey brush to paint over the pole. Nothing should happen just yet because we still have the original layer underneath it. Now the point of the entire picture that will be the most out of focus, i.e. the furthest points from the camera, is the area over here in the top right corner. So that means that we will now work on the walls layer. In this layer, we have areas that will be completely black and some that will be grey, as in in between fully in focus and fully out of focus. Let's hold Ctrl or Command on the keyboard and click on the walls layer mask to bring the selection back up. Also, a quick tip, let's hold Alt on the keyboard and click on the layer mask again so that we can actually see what we're doing. Press G on your keyboard and cycle through the tools with Shift G until you get the gradient tool icon. Let's select the two layers that we want, which are black and grey. Grey is already selected, let's just click on this one and make it black. 
Click and drag over the mask until you get a nice gradient that starts on the bottom left corner with grey and finishes in the top right corner with black. Something like that should work nicely. Dissect everything with Ctrl Command D and bring back the layer again by holding Alt and clicking on the mask. Let's repeat this process with the floor. Now we know that the furthest point of the floor doesn't get fully out of focus, so that means that the darkest point of the layer mask will be more of a darkish grey, not black. And since the floor comes into focus in the area near Harley's feet, let's make the second color white. Again, hold Ctrl Command and click on the layer mask to bring back the selection, then hold Alt and click on the mask again to view it. With the gradient tool, let's create a gradient that starts with dark grey in the top right side and finishes with white where the feet are. Something like that should work really good. So now this is what all the layers together look like with their masks applied and without the original picture underneath. Now we've got all the masks done separately and it's time to merge them all into one single layer which will be our depth map. Not to be confused with the depth star because that's got nothing to do with Photoshop. Let's duplicate the original layer and call it depth map. Hold Ctrl Command on your keyboard and click on the first layer mask. Now hold down Ctrl Command and Shift on your keyboard and click on the other three masks to add them to our selection. Now with the depth map layer selected, click on the layer mask icon and bosh. All the masks have been applied into one single mask to roll them all. One little tip here, if you want to solo only one layer, you can hold down Alt on your keyboard and click on this little eye icon and Photoshop will only show that to you. This imperfection here and there won't affect the final results that much, so we won't have to worry about them with this picture. Okay, so we've isolated every object and surfaces in the picture. We've even created a depth map. That's pretty advanced stuff, well done you! Now it's time to apply that depth map to a blur effect that will use the black and white information to determine the points that need to stay in focus, the point that needs to be out of focus, and all the steps in between. But first, let's add a safe point to our work by duplicating this depth map, just in case we do mess up and don't manage to kill the dungeon's boss. Let's call this new layer final. Yes, final, because once the blur effect is applied, we won't be able to tweak it any further. So, uh, you know, we might as well. Make sure the layer is selected, not its mask. Go up to filter, go down to blur and select lens blur. This opens up a new menu with loads of options. It can look bamboozling, but don't worry, the functions are actually quite simple. The first section is just the render preview. More accurate will look more realistic, but will take more time depending on the capacity of your computer. I'm just going to leave it on faster for now. Let's go down, and now you can see a term I've been using quite a lot today, which is depth map. Aha! It's all coming round. This is what I've been talking about for the entirety of the video. The lens blur effect can use different types of information to determine the depth and focal point of a picture. Let's obviously choose layer mask, after all this work we just put in. Now here is really how powerful and cool this effect is. If you move the blur focal distance slider left and right, it will literally act like a focus ring on a camera's lens. For any fellow photographers out there, this will be right up your alley. Check this out. Here the focus is only on this bit of the floor. Here it's on the wall. How cool is that? I'm just going to leave that on zero and make sure that invert is selected and I will make Harley completely in focus and the rest completely out of focus if it's black. The only other option we need to look at today is the iris radius. For the photographers out there, this is basically like your lens's aperture. The more open the aperture is, the more light comes through the lens and the shallower the depth of field is, meaning that what's out of focus becomes very blurry. I find that for this picture, somewhere between 60 and 70 looks very realistic. Once you're happy with the settings and you're 100% sure that the picture looks how you want it to, you can press OK. There won't be any going back and tweaking the settings here. If the layer mask is still applied, just hold shift on your keyboard and click on it to get rid of it. Now resize the pictures to remove the feathers edges and bosh, you're done. Let's do a quick before and after. Noise. So there you have it, this is the proper and realistic way to blur your backgrounds inside of Photoshop using depth maps. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something useful. If you did and you did my accent, you can like this video, get subscribed and hit the notification bell. Also, if you'd like to support my work and this growing channel, you can check out my brand new merch and presets on my website. I have all of that linked to the description below. Finally, if you're wondering what to watch next, I recommend you to watch one of these videos right here. Thanks again for watching. My name is Francois. See you in the next video.